new data on Earth-like planets. Since its launch in 2009, the Kepler Space Telescope has discovered lots of exoplanets orbiting distant stars. Some of them have an Earth-like mass, composition, and orbits. NASA plans to launch a new generation of telescopes in the 2040s. They'll help us find real twins of our planet and even get pictures of their surfaces. The Return of Halley's Comet It'll be another 41 years before we once again see the most famous comet in the sky. Halley's visits us every 75 years, so some will manage to see it twice in their lifetime. The Longest Solar Eclipse 166 years from now, I'll still be around then, <laughs> the sun will go dark for 7 minutes and 29 seconds. This is pretty close to the predicted maximum. It'll also be the longest eclipse human civilization has ever witnessed in its 10,000 years. Arrival of the Most Notorious Asteroid 1950 DA was once the most probable candidate among near-Earth objects we know to actually strike the planet. Fortunately, the chance was later estimated to be not even a tenth of a percent. It'll most likely pass by on March 16, 2880 mark your calendars, and it'll become a solid evidence that we're safe for a while. The asteroid is more than a mile in diameter, enough to take out life on a planet. A new North Star? The Earth spins like a top. Watch one of these toys closely, and you'll see how its tip starts to draw circles in the air. The Earth's axis, an imaginary line going through the poles, goes full circle once every 26,000 years. It points at different stars along the way, thus changing the North Star. By the year 3000, the Gamma Cephei star will share this title with Polaris as the Earth's axis will point right between them. The first near-Earth supernova Antares is the 15th brightest star in the night skies. It's also an old red supergiant, 12 times larger than the Sun. Stars this massive age to a point where they collapse in on themselves, producing huge supernovas. For Antares, this will happen just 10,000 years from now, which is nothing for a 12-million-year-old star. The resulting burst will be too far away to affect life on this planet negatively. But the light show will be visible here on Earth even during the day. Message to the Universe – Delivered Arecibo is the encoded message describing humanity, life on Earth, and the advancement of our scientific knowledge. It was broadcast from the Arecibo radio telescope and aimed at the center of the M13 cluster 25,000 light years away from us. In 25,000 years, it'll finally reach its destination. A new closest star About 36,000 years from now, the Ross 248 star will become our new closest neighbor. It'll be just three light years away from us and overtake the title from Proxima Centauri, which is a bit more than four light years away. Ross 248 will remain the nearest star for around 9,000 years and then move away once again. So, you didn't like the neighborhood or what? The first interstellar human made object. In 40,000 years, Voyager 1 will reach a point within 1.5 light years of the Gliese 445 star. It successfully reached interstellar space in 2013. But unfortunately, it won't be able to power up any of its systems somewhere beyond the year 2025. Voyager 1 has a message too a recording of greetings in 55 languages, music from classical to rock and roll, and sounds of the Earth's wildlife. A bear Saturn 100,000 years from now, Saturn will lose its beautiful rings. It'll happen gradually over time as the planet's colossal gravity pulls rocks and ice from this belt floating around it. They'll all eventually fall and get crushed and burned by Saturn's atmosphere. Well, how rude! The ring system is in the middle of its life cycle, so we're incredibly lucky we got to see it in its full glory. The most frightening supernova The WR-104 star will burst into a supernova in 3,000 years. This star is 75,000 light years away from us, and the blast won't touch us at all. But there is a small chance it'll also produce a gamma-ray burst in the process. 
if this stream of energy happens to aim right at us, it will negatively affect life on Earth. Good news? Scientists say that's very unlikely. Colliding moons The moons of Uranus are part of a highly unstable system. Some of them have orbits that cross paths. Uranus already has two rings of debris from past collisions of its natural satellites. Desdemona and Cressida will crash into each other in the next million years and produce new rings. A star too close for comfort. The rogue Gliese 710 star is approaching our solar system, and it will get just one light year away in 1.3 million years. This won't have a major impact on the planets, but it could disturb the so-called Oort cloud, which surrounds our solar system and is full of comets. From Earth, the star will look like the brightest planets we see now, and we'll see many more comets in the skies. The closest star to ever go supernova. Within a few million years, the Spica star, which is only 240 light years from us, will burst into a supernova. Supernova are a problem for life when they're three times closer than that, but the supernova itself will shine in the Earth's skies as bright as a full moon. A time capsule for future generations. The Longios 1 satellite was launched back in 1976 to gather information about the exact shape of the Earth and tectonic plate movement. But it also contained information about civilization on Earth at the time. It'll re enter our atmosphere in 8.4 million years. If humanity is around then, they'll learn how life on Earth was in our time. Well, at least how it was some 40 years ago. Rings for Mars Mars' moon, Phobos, orbits really close to the surface, and it continues to get two feet closer every century. 50 million years from now, it'll collide with Mars, resulting in a massive amount of debris going into orbit and forming a ring system around the red planet. Oh, can't wait for that. Days on Earth will get longer. No, really? 1.4 billion years ago, the Moon was much closer to our planet. It made the Earth rotate faster, so the day was only 18 hours. The Moon is continuously moving away from Earth. In 180 million years, we'll gain one extra hour. In a little over 2 billion years, a day on Earth will be 36 hours long. No more solar eclipses. 600 million years into the future, the Moon will move away from the Earth too far to cover the Sun during eclipses. Those will become ancient relics. The Sun will get too bright. It'll take about a billion years for the Sun to raise its luminosity by 10%. This will be devastating for planets in the solar system, and life on Earth won't be possible beyond this point. By then, our species will likely have found a new planetary home. The Sun will swallow the inner planets. In 5 billion years, the Sun will begin to evolve into a red giant, growing hundreds of times its current size. It'll swell up so much, it will eventually engulf Mercury, Venus, and possibly Earth. The new Goldilocks habitable zone may shift to the orbits of Jupiter and Saturn. This process will take a bit under 3 billion years until the Sun reaches its maximum size. After that, our star will shrink into a white dwarf. The most epic event ever. Around the same time our Sun is swelled up, the nearest neighboring galaxy, Andromeda, will come too close to the Milky Way. If we could watch our galactic neighbor at this time, it'll get larger and larger as it approaches. Then, the two galaxies will start to merge. Bright blue stars will burst into life. New constellations will form. The two spiral galaxies will now be a single giant elliptical one. Wow, I've set an alarm on my smartphone so I don't miss it. Now, let's pretend that humanity faces a huge threat from outer space. So we'll imagine that a uh, giant planet-eating octopus comes to our solar system to eat uh, Venus, Mars, Earth, um, Jupiter, and other planets, except Saturn. Therefore, people decide to move to the big planet with giant rings. Fortunately, they already have cool technologies that allow them to make such trips. So we get into giant ships, take off, and fly to Saturn. 
Life on the planet itself is impossible because it has no solid ground. The ship won't be able to land there. This is a giant gas ball that is 9 times wider than Earth. To compare their sizes, look at a 5-cent coin and a baseball. And the planet's atmosphere consists mainly of hydrogen and helium. So if the ship starts to land, it'll never reach solid ground. And the lower it goes, the higher the pressure it will experience. Eventually, the ship will just be crushed. Therefore, we have only one choice. The rings of Saturn. They're made up of giant, medium-sized, and tiny particles of ice and rock flying around the gas giant at tremendous speed. They were formed from comets flying by. Saturn's gravity knocked these celestial bodies off their course and crushed them with its pressure. Fragments of these comets began to accumulate around Saturn, forming rings. Now, Some of these particles fly faster, some are slower. The closest to the planet is the D-ring. It's followed by rings C and B. Then there's a large gap called Cassini division. Rings A, F, G, and E come after. This classification is very convenient for creating a ring map. So people approach the rings, but don't dare to land on them. First, they send test capsules with robots to scout the area. The robots choose a suitable location on the E-ring. In fact, the distance between the rocks is quite large, and the ship can easily fly there. There are tiny particles, huge rocks the size of houses, and comets the size of a whole mountain. The first robot flies up to a large rock at high speed. At this moment, a baseball-sized stone pierces the robot's body. Another robot gets smashed between two colliding boulders. The third robot gets caught in a rain of sharp icicles and breaks. People have big engineering workshops on their ships, so they build new capsules and new robots. This time, they're made of more durable materials, so the robots reach a big rock again. A few particles crash into them, but don't break through the armor. The machine set up a small station on a flying rock where people can live. But after a couple of hours, a big chunk of asteroids smashes the station. Well, seems like we need another strategy. Giant ships scan the entire area of the E-ring and calculate the trajectories of billions of stones. After lengthy calculations, people finally find the perfect places in the middle of this chaos that will stay intact for a long time. They land on these large rocks in their capsules and begin to settle down. They build stations and small houses and install powerful batteries on them. Saturn is located at a distance of 9.5 astronomical units from the Sun. One unit is the distance from the Sun to Earth. So Saturn is a pretty cold place. That's why there's so much ice flying around it. But how to get the energy to heat it all up? There's too little of it on large ships. Besides, solar panels are ineffective here because of the great distance from the sun. Therefore, scientists create a way to generate kinetic energy from flying stones. It's like a windmill. When the wind drives the fans, these movements are converted into energy. So engineers build panels that collect power from the moving stones. But it doesn't slow the speed of rocks down because Saturn's gravity continues to move them. Thus, people receive a source of almost limitless energy. Some space stations have plants and trees that produce oxygen through photosynthesis. Only instead of sunlight, they get energy from ultraviolet. Then people fill large tanks with oxygen and carry them to their homes. People begin to occupy the adjacent rings. You don't need a lot of fuel to get from one place to another. You can land on a rock, calculate its route, and wait for it to bring you to the needed point. Then you can move to another one, and so on, until you reach your destination. More and more people leave their ships and move to the rings. It seems that life is getting better, but then psychological problems begin. Constant movement in the vacuum of space drives everyone mad. Imagine living on a carousel that never stops. You can't walk to the store whenever you want because it always flies away. No one can go out for a walk, even in a spacesuit, because there's a chance to come across a rock flying at high speed. You can't plan anything because, at the moment, your plans can be ruined by a giant piece of ice. Computers don't help either. They can't calculate the trajectories of all space bodies. Rocks tend to break and split into hundreds of smaller ones. Also, new comets fly by and also become part of the rings. 
All this creates uncertainty and causes a sense of anxiety in people. Besides, it's dark, cold, and very lonely on the rings. Now think about building a base on a space object. But your best friend lands on another one a few miles away. Then a giant icicle crashes into his rock and increases its speed. And a few days later, your friend is too far away. And it happens all the time. The only way to change your life is to settle on one of Saturn's moons. The planet has 83 of them. People have already confirmed and named 63, and the existence of 20 others has yet to be confirmed. They're all like different worlds. Some of them may be habitable, and the best candidate among them is Titan. There may be water on it, and its atmospheric pressure is only one and a half times greater than Earth's. Its atmosphere consists of nitrogen and a little methane, forming carbon smog in Titan's upper layers. For this reason, we can't study this moon from Earth. But the coolest thing is that Titan flies outside the rings of Saturn. This means people can lead a quiet life there. There's also satellite Phoebe, covered with craters like our moon. This giant celestial body looks more like a gigantic meteorite. People have a lot of choices of where to start a new life. During a couple of hundred years spent on ships near Saturn, humanity would learn everything about its satellites. But why did they try to live on the rings? Why didn't they land on one of the moons from the very beginning? Because, well, then this video would be less fun and a whole lot shorter. But what if we were initially born inside the rings of Saturn? Let's say a massive meteorite with frozen water got caught by the planet's gravity. There were the simplest life forms inside the ice. And then, this life began to acquire more developed forms. Imagine that the large rock managed to remain untouched for hundreds of millions of years. And during this time, humans appeared. But of course, they would be very different there. Firstly, they wouldn't experience gravitational forces. This would make them taller, but weaker. People's skin would be pale because of the lack of light, but very hardy thanks to cold temperatures. Particles of ice and grains of sand flying in space would roughen people's skin. In such biological armor, without gravity, they would jump from one rock to another in search of food and water. And, by the way, that would be the main problem. How would people survive without oxygen in the vacuum of space? Where would they get their food? Saturn's rings are a pretty lifeless and dangerous place. If there are not even the simplest forms of life there, then how could such a complex one as the human appear? Therefore, even in theory, the appearance of people would be impossible there. You take a giant straw and begin to inflate Saturn. It's getting bigger and bigger and bigger. That's enough. Now let's add some giant rings. That's it. This is Super Saturn, also called Saturn on steroids. It's a real object that scientists discovered in 2012, a planet named J1407b. And astronomers are still not sure what it really is. It could be a gas giant, like Jupiter or Saturn, in our solar system. Then there would be no solid surface there. And if you wanted to set foot on that planet, you just fall through it, all the way to the core. But it could also be a brown dwarf. That's something between a large planet and a full-fledged star. Such objects have to be heavy enough to start thermonuclear reactions, like those going on inside stars. But the power of these reactions is too weak for brown dwarfs to glow and emit heat. To imagine the size and weight of J1407b, let's look at our Earth. If you put our planet on a scale, it'll show six and another 21 zeros tons. Our planet is also about 7,900 miles across. Now, that's Jupiter, the largest planet in our solar system. Its diameter is 11 times as great as that of Earth. It's also 318 times heavier. If Jupiter were a bucket, you could put 1,321 Earths in it. And this is the hero of the day, Super Saturn. It's almost 20 times as large as Jupiter. To balance the scales, you need to put 6,360 Earths on the other side. The planet's rings are so wide that if they were in the solar system, they would take up more than half the space between the Sun and Earth. And if Super Saturn switched places with the original Saturn, you'd see those rings with the unaided eye. 
they would be larger than a full moon. Presumably, these rings appeared in the same way as the ones around our Saturn. One theory says they're the remains of a moon that was once there. Its orbit was unstable, and over time, the moon got torn apart by the tidal forces of the huge planet it orbited. Small pieces of the former moon took their places in the giant's orbit. They collided with one another, like in a blender. After some time, everything that was left was basically particles of dust and ice moving around the colossal planet. Another theory suggests that the rings appeared after the moon collided with an asteroid or another moon. Then the gravitational blender did its job and turned the moon's debris into the rings. Some scientists think the rings formed at around the same time as the planet itself. So they're just the remains of the planetary nebula, which is a cloud of gas, space debris, and dust. Later, it probably shrunk and solidified to form a planet. We can only guess where Super Saturn got its rings from, but scientists say their mass is 80% of that of Earth. It may mean that the moon that used to orbit J1407b was about the same size as our planet. There's a little gap in the middle of these rings. Scientists think Super Saturn's moon might be there. If this is the case, it should be about the size of Mars. If scientists are right and Super Saturn is actually a brown dwarf, then this is an incredible discovery. Scientists will be able to watch it age. Supposedly, brown dwarfs lose their energy and shrink, fading in the process. And when a brown dwarf exhausts all its energy, it turns into a black dwarf. It's easy to confuse it with a black hole. People haven't discovered black dwarfs anywhere in the universe yet because they take trillions and quadrillions of years to form. Our universe is too young, and none of the stars, even those that appeared when the universe was born, have had time to become black dwarfs. One of the oldest objects in the universe is the white dwarf with a pretty long name, WD 0346 plus 246. It's about 11 to 12 billion years old and half as cold as our sun, and it's still cooling. It would need around 10 plus another 15 zeros years to turn into a black dwarf. For comparison, the universe is 1.4 and 10 zeros years old. Scientists believe that a black dwarf will exist for about 10 plus 25 zeros years, feeding on dark matter. After that, its protons, the smallest particles of matter, will begin to decay. And then the black dwarf will simply evaporate. That will take another 10 plus 49 zeros years. But if the protons remain intact, a much more interesting scenario will await the black dwarf. In another 10 in 1500 zeros years, the black dwarf will become an iron star. It's essentially just a cannonball in space. The iron sphere will exist billions of times longer than our entire universe has existed until it suddenly turns into a black hole. So the process of the formation of a black dwarf is extremely long. It'd take a regular star an insane amount of time to age that much. But Super Saturn, if it is a brown dwarf, may be much closer to this state. Saturn on steroids is not the only strange planet in our universe. This is Gliese 436b. It's been detected using the transit method. A transit happens when a planet moves between its host star and an observer. It looks similar to a lunar eclipse. This planet is four times the size of Earth and 22 times as heavy. That's almost like Neptune. It's an exotic water world. The water there is solid, but it's not ice. It has a temperature of about 520 degrees Fahrenheit. The water in your pot turns into steam at 212 degrees Fahrenheit. But on Gliese 436b, the liquid remains solid because of the extreme pressure on the planet. Scientists have also discovered that the planet's atmosphere is evaporating into outer space. That's why there's a giant circular cloud around it. It's constantly moving in its orbit, giving the planet a long tail that looks like that of a comet. Cancri E holds incredible riches worth more than all the money on Earth. There are diamonds scattered all over the planet. Cancri E is about twice as wide and eight times as heavy as Earth. This planet doesn't rotate. Only one of its sides always faces its host star. The surface temperature there is almost twice as high as the temperature of a burning fire. And since the host star is rich in carbon, the planet contains plenty of this element too. The intense pressure and temperatures help turn carbon into graphite and diamonds. Unfortunately, this planet is 40 light years away from our home. 
So it'd take about 730,000 years to get there on a regular rocket. Another planet rich in gems is Hat P7b. It's about 1,000 light years away from Earth. It's 60% as large and nearly twice as heavy as Jupiter. The planet is so close to its host star that it makes one revolution around it in just two Earth days. Because of such close proximity to the star, Hat P7b is almost as hot as a white dwarf. If you look at the night side of this planet, you'll see unusual clouds. Scientists believe that these clouds may be rich in corundum material. This is the very substance that forms rubies and sapphires, so it's likely to rain very expensive and beautiful gems there. WASP-12b is one of the darkest planets ever discovered. Only one of its sides faces its host star. The planet's surface is so dark that it eats up about 94% of all visible light, so it looks a lot like a black hole. The host star heats up the planet so much that the material there continuously evaporates. Then the star's strong gravity pulls this cloud toward itself, forming a disk. But TRES-2b is the champion. It's the darkest planet known to people. It absorbs 99% of the light coming from its star, which means it consumes more light than a piece of coal. 1% of the remaining light looks red as it gets reflected by this gas giant. From afar, this planet looks very evil. One of the oldest planets in the universe is PSR B1620 26b. It's about 12.7 billion years old. This means that it formed about 1 billion years after the Big Bang. The planet is so old that its two host stars have had time to evolve. One is a white dwarf. The other is a pulsar that makes almost 100 revolutions per second. Sunrises on this planet must be stunning. Right now, this star system is moving toward a dense cluster of stars. This is likely to lead to a stellar collision, so the fate of this planet is unknown. Kepler-438b is one of the most Earth-like planets. It's only 12% larger and is in the habitable zone of its host star, not too close and not too far away. It's a sweet spot where water doesn't evaporate because of the heat and doesn't turn into ice because of the cold. This planet might host life on its surface. In the future, it may also become a new home for humanity, but it would take people about 470 years to get to this planet even if we traveled at the speed of light, which is impossible due to the laws of physics.